In today's episode, I'm going to try out this Creality PEI metalized bed. It comes with a magnet, but I'm just going to use it to replace the bed on my Ender 3 Pro. Just slap it on there, and we'll see how it does on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. Creality didn't send me this. I actually bought this on Amazon from ComGrow. That's the reseller. But it says it's actual Creality. It says PEI. Now mine came with a small blemish right here. It's almost like a little bump. And the edges of it aren't cut very clean. I don't think it's the metal that's rough. It just feels like the PEI is really, really rough. If it's slapped on there and cut. It almost feels like I'll get a paper cut if I keep rubbing my finger on it. But... I've had a lot of people tell me that they get great results with PEI. I tried it years ago when it was kind of new. I didn't get great results. So I've stuck with build tack and also glass with glue on most of my printers. So I was interested to try this out because my Ender 3 Pro has this flexible magnetic bed and it's wore out. I mean, I have done everything. I've cleaned it with IPA. I've cleaned it with soapy water and let it dry. I've even taken a sandpaper to it. That <laughs> actually it helped a little bit. But lately, I've just been swiping glue stick. You know, I just grab one of these big glue sticks that I use on glass, rub it on it. It's been working great. But it's gotten to the point where it's kind of all mucked up and it just needs to be replaced. And the magnet still seems to hold pretty well. But I wanted to try this and see if it's a better surface. Now, I could have replaced the magnet on it, but I really want to just see how this does with the existing magnet. And I also wanted to try this on another machine that I could just clamp it on with the clips. And then if it works, then I'll add the magnet. But the first step was to put this on, and it seems to hold pretty good. I can move the bed. It doesn't seem to be sliding. So now let's print something. The first thing I did was run my bed level test. I got a whole video on this if you haven't seen it. A lot of people have. And it works really well and this one leveled perfectly. It even went around that blemish which was really interesting. So I knew my bed was level. Now it was time to run a print. So the first thing I ran was this. This was already on the SD card. It's a foot that goes underneath the Ender 3. I've got them on here. One at each corner. Now I normally print them in Ninja Flex so they're nice and soft. It takes care of some of the vibration and it actually lifts the machine up so I can get to the SD card on a normal Ender 3 much easier. On the Ender 3 Pro, it's already lifted so it's not as big a deal. But I decided to print them anyway in hard plastic because I've been wanting to see how they fit within uh, a 2020 rail. So I printed one out and I was amazed how good it printed and how smooth the bottom was. This is smoother than glass because normally on glass I'll put a swipe of glue stick and then I gotta wipe that off so you get a little bit of you know messed up surface just a little but this is just perfect so I decided to print another one and perfect. Now I noticed that this one squished down just a little bit more than the other one but that really wasn't a PEI bed and I printed at the same location so then I was ready to print something bigger. In a previous video, I showed how I turned the extruder 90 degrees and mounted the spool holder at the back. I really like this, but it does interfere with the bed just a little bit. And it's really just like a 2 inches by 2.5 inch area at the back of the bed. And I'm really not worried about it because I rarely ever print back there. So I haven't done a lot to improve this rear mount. But some other people did. There's a couple remixes to it that's on there in Thingiverse. And Demand 101, I think is what he goes by, he actually made an offset. It's not a remix of this, but it's an add-on. So you can slide it into the rail and then mount my spool holder into that offset and it shifts the whole spool over. So I decided to print that. And here's the finished print and it's kind of cool. It slides into the rail and then my mount slides into it and just shifts it over a bit. But the problem with the print is it warped. It warped on this PEI bed. And only on one side. So I decided to adjust the bed on that side, maybe make it a little closer, and print it again. And then it got worse. It actually warped more, and I could see that the skirt was actually too close to the bed. It was too close on one side. On the side, it was warping. So it clearly was a problem with that area of this PEI bed. 
So then I tried printing it 90 degrees to that position and it got worse. This is what I walked back to after letting it print overnight. What a mess. So I decided to give it one more chance. So I printed in the same location, only this time I watched it go down, the first layer. I watched the skirt go down, I watched the first layer go down, everything looked good. I walked away for a little bit, came back maybe five minutes later, and it had already had broken away from the bed, it was stuck to the nozzle and moving around, so I stopped it, quickly got that off, cleaned off the nozzle, and at that point decided I'm done. This PEI bed does not work, at least this one doesn't either. I have a defective one, which I kind of do because it's got a blemish on it. So I'm going to send this back to the Amazon reseller, either get my money back or maybe they'll give me another one. I don't know, but I'd really love to hear your thoughts. If you have one of these and it's working for you or not working for you, let me know in the comments below. I did go back and print that bracket extension on one of my Ender 3s with a, like a build tack material, printed nicely, nice and flat, and it slides into the rail really, really nicely. And my mount slips in a little bit tight, but it does work. But when I mount it here, the spool is now just too far over to one side. And now the filament's coming at such a uh, bad angle that it's actually worse. So it's nothing wrong with his design, it's perfectly fine, but I want my spool a little more in line with the uh, extruder. And if I lose a little bit, you know, two inches by two and a half inches, it's not a big deal. I, I rarely print there. So I think I'm gonna stick with my design as it is. I may improve it over time, but right now it's been working great. I've been printing on this machine like crazy. So I love it and it's not wearing. I'm not seeing any wear on this. The plastic one might wear, but this one I'm not seeing any wear. So I think I'm just gonna stick with my original design. So if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos that are popping up and click on that Chep logo and subscribe. That way you don't miss an episode. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.